Hey guys, uh, welcome to the channel for Blue Star Industrial Arts. Today I'm going to show you how to make these um, spoon spoon art flowers, windmills, flowers, flower type windmills, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these get stuck in the ground in my wife's whim whimsical garden. Um, what's good about them, they catch the sun and everything, and if you do it right, they'll, they'll, they'll spin around and they'll catch the wind. Um, and we use basically scrap metal um, and garage sale silverware. So stay tuned and I'll just give you a brief rundown on how we put these together. Um, but you could use your imagination and definitely differ from this. But here we go. The first thing you should do is get yourself um, some hardware. These are... Um, one inch by half inch, half inch by one inch, 13 um, nuts and bolts, just a zinc plated stuff that you get at the big box stores or anything else. Um, they're about 29 cents a piece. I guess you could get a box of these for about $5. Now, one of the things I do with the hex nut is because we want this to go onto the bolt and spin without having to thread itself. So in other words, this thing could spin freely all the time. Uh, you have to bore this out a little bit. So I just, well, I just put it on a lathe and, and um, take a half inch drill and bore through here to a half inch and um, it fits on the bolt and it's not too much slop and it'll turn because remember we're going to be mounting the flower on the hex nut and we want it to be able to spin and I'll show you how we're going to put a stop on here um, so that's the first thing you have to do is, is get that and, and modify it so you have like a, a, a nice fit here that's all it's not that fancy here you can see I have the six spoons and try to get the spoons all the same pattern if you can because sometimes the shape will be different. <clears throat> so we want to keep the shape the same. But um, so we have six teaspoons here. These are teaspoon size. And if you're using the half inch bolt and nut, um, teaspoon size is good. If you want to make something bigger, like with tablespoon size or something like that, then go to three quarters or or something along that those lines. But for uh, teaspoon sizes, a half inch works nice. And there you see the nut sliding on the bolt the way it's supposed to. Next, you want to bend your spoon into ninety degrees. We're going to use this face for the front. Of the flower so we want to bend it back like that and the easiest way to do that these are stainless steel but they don't bend good cold so you gotta heat it up with your torch remember this vice acts like a big heat sink so let this get hot because if you try to bend it cold it might break When it's hot, you see how bendable it is?
And don't touch it with your hands, because it's fucking hot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut these about a quarter inch from the bend. So we have a nice flat spot to uh, solder onto the hex head. So we'll do that with all six. I just use an angle grinder for this. And it's by eye, you don't have to measure anything. That's what you end up with. And this is good because we could weld it from the back. And I'll tell you why in a second. I just use a grinder to grind a little flat. Take the fur off here. So it sits nice and flat on the hex head. And we'll go through all six like this. It takes about a second. Alrighty, now these are going to be welded on to our hex head bolt here. Um, and the indent of the spoon faces outward. Um, one of the things I've recommend and, and, and found effective is instead of mounting them so the spoon is like totally faced parallel with, with the nut or with the bolt here, you want to turn them maybe about 20 or 30 degrees. This way, it acts almost like a windmill. And when you when you turn it like this, okay, it's picking up the um, the wind from any direction, and it's it, it makes it move a little bit, and it it's eh, I don't know more better. It, it it looks better. Anyway, it's animation. Uh, one of the things you might want to think about doing is um, taking a piece of like 80 grit uh, emery cloth or whatever and just sanding the schmooze off of the uh, flat sections of your hex bolt. Um, you don't really have to worry about sanding anything but one flat on your nuts. God damn, that doesn't sound right. But um, because the nut is only going to have the stem on it, so you just have to do uh, one surface. So, you know, you don't have to go crazy with sanding there. And uh, it's not really a sanding, it's just, you know, getting any oils or whatever. Because we're only tack welding this, so, and this is zinc plated stuff. And that's stainless steel, so you, you want to be able to get as good of a weld as you can on these little guys. Not that they have a whole bunch of load on them, because they don't. Now, you might want to think about brazing these on, if you all are into brazing or anything. I don't have an acetylene torch or brazing equipment, so I just use my MIG welder, which is dialed down quite low for this operation because um, this stuff is thin you burn through those spoons if you don't so but you just do something like that just to clean these flats up because what we're going to do next is we're going to take this spoonage and we're going to mount them on here like so add a little bit of an angle and we're going to want to weld them Preferably from uh, the back, so you don't get a whole bunch of splatter right here. That's something I've learned. If you if you if you weld them from the front, you get even a little bit of weld splatter. These spoons are stainless steel, and they won't rust. But any weld splatter will kind of rust and look shitty. And somebody had said, "Well, you just paint them." Well, why would I want to paint? They're made out of metal. I want them to look like metal. So therefore. I'll try to be careful when I weld them. Anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. So, again, a little bit of an angle here. All right. A little bit, just a tiny bit of a cant. And then we're going to weld all six spoons to all six sides of the hex nut. 
All right. And then we proceed to weld these. And it's just a really a tack weld. Again, just kind of holding it in place. I have uh, my ground clamp right to my vise. It's, it's not a big deal weld, and I'm not a big deal welder. I'm kind of an artiste welder. But I try to get the same angle. And we'll just do a little bit of a, of a tack here. That's about good. It doesn't take much to hold them, as you can see. They're pretty stout. And we continue on, and we weld all six of these on. Okay, we have our petals of our flower. Now we have to work on the stem part. The stem part I'm using um, this, it's a, just under an eighth of an inch. It's actually a spring steel. This is uh, taken from signs you see everywhere on lawns, vote for me, a garage sale or whatever. This is good steel. So if you come across this steel, if you take one of these signs without any problems, do so because it's good stuff. What's good about it is it's, it's, it's strong, and to bend it, you have to heat it up a little bit. But we're going to show you how we do that. We're just going to put about a half inch or so in the vise. Take our hot gas torch. Let it get hot because, again, bending this cold tends to break it. So we got a 90 degree bend in there. We want to uh, flatten this part out here. So when we um, put it on our nut, we'll have a nice flat surface to weld on. So how I do that is very simple. This heats up pretty quick. Just get it to a nice red polar. I put it on the anvil portion of my harbor horrible freight vise, which I have no complaints about. And just hammer a flat spot on it. If you want, I guess you could grind a flat spot on it. Um, we're going to put our sanded nut in a vise right here. Hopefully you're seeing all this, you know, I don't. Yeah. There we go. Like so, and very quickly, very quick tack weld on here. Nothing fancy. Bingo. And in a nutshell, there you are. Um, we're just going to add a little tack weld back here just to keep this guy from coming out. So all we have to do is put a glob of weld on there and it's not a big deal. Now we're going to do one more thing and I'll be right back with you. Okay, there you go. Uh, I usually like to uh, use the handles of the spoons and make like little uh, leaves or whatever the hell you call those things coming up from a plant. And I might like uh, do a dollop of black paint around here. 
But I like to keep the metal metal because it kind of catches a glint in the sun. I've had some friends say, oh, I, I want to paint mine. I want to make some yellow. I want to make some blue. Yeah, then you can make them out of plastic. You know, his whole the idea is that it's made out of spoons, right? So uh, a little wire wheeling and a little touching up and um, you have a nice thing. I, I put a um, just a weld bead on the end of the bolt so this thing won't come flying off. And if it catches a wind, it'll it'll spin. You know, it doesn't. It's not really a windmill, but it's, um, so anyway, you could do these in a lot of ways. You could kind of bend the spoons up and make them like a tulip or an iris or whatever. Use your imagination. This video was just here to uh, give you the idea. Um, garage sale spoons. Jesus, I, I, I bought a bag of about 100 spoons for 5 bucks. Um, some of them are pain in the ass to weld. They're supposedly stainless steel, but some of them are powdered metal. Um, if you get powdered metal ones, they're not going to weld. So just, you know, throw those ones out. Uh, the stainless steels will weld. But anyway, so that's this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And contact me at Blue Star Industrial Arts. Like my page. Let's exchange ideas, whatever. But uh, until next time, I'll see you later. And have a good summer, if summer ever comes. Here in the Northeast, it's still raining and in the 50s. Anyway, bye.